Hey everyone, today we're exploring the new adaptive color profiles in Lightroom Classic. Let's dive in and see what they can do. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Lightroom Classic now has adaptive color profiles. Now, these have been available in Adobe Camera Raw, but you couldn't use them in Lightroom, which was kind of a drag. But now that they're here in Lightroom, I'm really excited about it. We're going to jump in and I'll show you the adaptive color profiles. But first off, I want to say they only work on raw files. Well, let's go ahead and dive in and check out these adaptive color profiles. Now, right now I have an unedited image, as you can see right here. And by default, I have an Adobe color profile. Now, you always want to start your edit out by picking the proper profile for your image. This is Adobe color. Now, if I click this button right here with the four rectangles, now this is where you can find your profiles. Here are my favorites. I have 10 favorites. And then if I scroll down through, you can see here are my Adobe Raw profiles. And then I have camera matching profiles. And if we scroll down even further, we're going to find our adaptive profiles. You can click on a star and make it a favorite. And once you make it a favorite, it's going to show up here in your favorites right here. Right now, I'm using the Adobe Color Profile. But watch what happens when I hover over adaptive color. Look at that change. Isn't that crazy? This is Adobe Color. This is the adaptive color. Now there's also an adaptive black and white. It's a good starting point for a black and white conversion. And then if you hover over like Adobe Landscape, it looks like that. Here's Adobe Color again, Adobe Neutral, Adobe Vivid, so on and so forth. And then you can come down to your camera matching profiles. Like here's my Landscape profile. Here's my portrait profile, neutral, standard. But again, let's go back up. And this time I will click on adaptive color. But take note, we have this amount slider so we can increase the Adobe adaptive color effect. If we move this to the right or decrease it to the left, double click it, it goes back to zero. You'll also notice like in these other profiles, you'll still see this amount slider. I'll click on Adobe color, but notice it is grayed out. We cannot change it here. But with the adaptive color and the adaptive black and white, we can make adjustments on these adaptive profiles. So that's nice. We have extra control here. So let me click on adaptive color. I'm going to go ahead and close this profile group by clicking on close. And you'll note we still have that slider here. Let's say, for instance, I want to increase this a little bit. That might be a little too much. I'll bring it back. I'm going to take it back to like right there, like 117. There are no adjustments yet, right? And a lot of times if I'm using like a, a color profile or a linear profile or whatever, I will click the auto button. Now with an adaptive profile, this is a no-no. You get this message for best results, avoid using auto and adaptive profiles together. Let's see what happens if we do. I'll click continue. That's what happens. It looks horrible, right? So I'm just going to do a command or control Z to undo that. If I'm not using an adaptive profile, a lot of times I will click auto because it's a good starting point and then you can retweak your adjustments here to get things just the way you want. Now for this image, what I would do is, you can see I'm clipping my highlights. So what I'll do is pull my highlights back a little bit just to get rid of that clipping there. And maybe I'll open up the shadows a tiny bit. And let's see what else I would do here. You know, maybe give it a tiny bit of texture, maybe a little bit of clarity, not much. You know, just a basic little edit. Now for my workflow at this point, I would send the image into Photoshop and complete the edit from there. So this would be my starting point. Now let's take a look at another image. Now here's my second image. Now right now we have Adobe Color on here. Now if you click right here, this is a drop down in your favorite profile show up in here. So you'll note I have adaptive color here. We could look at landscape. It would look like this. Um, camera standard would look like this. A linear profile profile would look like this. But now let's check out the adaptive color. So I'll click on that. And this is what we get. Not too bad. I think the effect is too strong. So I'm going to drag the amount slider to the left. I would take it back to maybe somewhere right about here. Looks pretty good. Maybe I'll pull back on the highlights. I would just do a minor little edit to get this ready to go into Photoshop. Pull those highlights back a little bit. Maybe pull my whites back a tiny bit to maybe somewhere right around here. And then at this point, I would send the image into Photoshop and 
complete the editing process in Photoshop. Let me show you a few more quick examples. Let me click on this image here. This image I shot with the Lens Baby Lens to give me that nice out of focus background, that nice little sweet spot in the center. Now this is the Adobe Color Profile and it looks pretty good. I'll click the drop down. Let's try Adobe Vivid. That's not bad, but now let's try Adaptive Color. So that looks pretty good. I like the way the overall image looks. I would probably settle on this adaptive profile. Now let's go ahead and adjust the amount. And I like this. I think I'm going to take it over to maybe right about here. Looks really good. Now I might take my shadow slider and drag it to the right just a little bit. Just to open up the shadows a tiny wee bit. And I think that looks really good right there. Now at this point I'd probably do a little crop in the image and then send it into Photoshop to finish the edit. I have two final images to show you. I'm going to click on this image. This is an iPhone image. Can you use an adaptive profile on an iPhone image? Yes, if it's a raw file. Now, I always shoot my images with a Lightroom app on my iPhone. And of course, I shoot raw files. They're DNG files. As you can see, this is a DNG file. This is the Adobe Color Profile. Here it is with the Adobe Vivid Profile. And now let's compare that to the Adaptive Color Profile. To me, that's a really good improvement. Okay, the adaptive color versus Adobe color. And again, adaptive color versus Adobe Vivid. That adaptive color profile works great on iPhone images. One more iPhone image for you. This one right here. I shot this one this morning. Again, another raw file. This is Adobe color. Here's the adaptive color profile. Brings out some really nice detail in here. So again, adaptive versus Adobe color. Again, adaptive color. And now let's try adaptive color versus say like Adobe Vivid. Here's Adobe Vivid, which is pretty good. But now let me go back to adaptive color. And let's work with the amount slider to see if we can make it better. Let me give it less. No, I don't like that. Let me give it more. And I think like right about here around 108 and that looks pretty good just the way it is i may not even have to touch any of the adjustments over here just send it right into photoshop and finish it off probably crop it first but now we have the adaptive color profile inside of lightroom classic and i believe it's inside of lightroom also and it's also in camera raw now if i wanted to use an adaptive profile before it came into lightroom classic i would have to send the image out as a smart object and then send it into camera raw from photoshop but now i don't have to do that which is really nice well there it is everyone i hope you enjoyed today's look into adaptive color profiles now in lightroom classic and i think they're going to be a real game changer. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.